Okay, so Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Today we are going to uh, start a new part which is about the load transfer to the beam. Now we have learned in the previous classes how to design a two-way solid collapse starting from the beginning till the end. And we said that normally there will be five checks that we need to do. Starting with the durability, if you remember, which was concerned about the cover and the minimum dimension. And then we said we need to check for bending, whether the section is singly or doubly reinforced. We said in slabs they will be singly reinforced. And um, we have taken as well shear reinforcement in which we are going to compare between uh, V and VC. And then eventually you will get no shear reinforcement is required due to less distribution of loading in a certain location in the slab. And then we have taken minimum and maximum percentage, or we checked for minimum percentage, which is area of reinforcement. That was the fourth check. And the fifth and last check was the, the deflection, okay. where we compared between the actual span by effective depth and the limiting span by effective depth. Okay. Now, if you see, I have uploaded for you today. Let me share the screen. Are you able to see now? Are you able to see the screen? Yes, Mr. Okay. So now if you see, I have uploaded for you in the general. Okay. I have uploaded for you in the general two items today. One is session 4.1 which is extra solved problem for a two-way solid club. And then um, today's session, which is load transfer to beams. Now, due to the short semester, I'm not going to solve other problems in slabs because we have elaborated a lot in drawing the bending moment, in finding the coefficients and the other things. Okay. But I have uploaded for you, I have uploaded for you one full solved problem. I'm going to highlight the differences at the beginning of this particular session. And then I'm going to go directly to the load transfer. If anybody is having any doubt regarding the session 4.1, then he can ask. I'll be posting one post in which you can ask any question on whatever you have, whatever you have taken in preparation for quiz number one. Now, once again, for quiz number one, we are trying to see uh, whether we can put it on the 11th of March if it's not holiday. If it's a holiday, then it's going to be most probably Sunday. I have already received some students saying that Sunday they are having a winter, so we'll see if there is any possibility to shift further. If there is nothing or none to be done, then we are going to keep it on Sunday, but in a different way. Okay. But first, I'm going to see the possible options. Now, if you see for uh, for session number session 4.1, which is related to design of a two-way slab. Now you see, this is the problem. Uh, this is the problem that we are tackling. Now, when we have solved, when we have solved the problem that we solved in the last couple of lectures, it was a uniform. It was a uniform slab. Okay, where it was a bit easier for you to incorporate the cases, the nine cases, if you remember, whether it is uh, short edge discontinuous, whether it is two edges and edges discontinuous. It means that it's easy to find out or figure out the uh, the case. Now the problem which happens here, if you see, I have or the question has asked you. This was one part of uh, a test. Okay. So the question here says, you need to design four meter and two seven meter span in slab. Uh, so we have two slabs here. Slab number one, and then we have slab number two. Now for slab number two, you don't have any problem actually because this part is considered discontinuous. This part is discontinuous. This part is discontinuous. Only one part which is continuous. So this is not a big deal. You can get you can get directly from the from the table where there are three discontinuous edges, one short edge which is uh, continuous. Now the problem which is happening 
is happening in slab number one. Now you can see in slab number one, this edge is having no problem. It's fully discontinued. This part is fully discontinued, so there is no issues about it. And then the other four meter is having no issues. Now the issue is happening in the side of seven, the left side of seven. You can see that half of it is discontinued. And then let's say more than half to be precise. And then there is a certain portion which is continued. Now we don't have we don't have a case which is saying for you that we have discontinuous and continuous. Okay, discontinuous and continuous. Now, what to do for this particular, what to do for this particular uh, scenario or this particular case? Any idea? What will you do for this case? If this comes for you in the midterm, I mean in the midterm or the quiz, what will you do for it? <coughs> separated. Okay, separated. So the correct answer, as your colleague said, we are going to separate it, but it's going to be one slab. So we are separating it into two cases or two scenarios. Scenario number one, where we are going to get that this section is going to be simply supported or discontinued. The other section where we are going to get it to be simple from one side and continuous from the other side. So what we are going to do, we are going to first scenario, we are going to have it discontinuous. These are fine. Now, first scenario, I'm going to keep it fully discontinuous. So I'll get this section. And then second scenario, I'm going to keep it three edges. Three edges. Uh, this continues, one edge which is continuous, representing this particular case. Okay. And then after that, you need to find out the corresponding bending moment. Now, how many bending moments will be there? You will be having this one to be your MX positive. This will be your MX dash positive. This will be your MX dash negative. So because there are two scenarios now for MX. And there will be two scenarios for MY. Okay, there will be two scenarios for MY. One corresponds to this scenario. The other case is going to have the same shape, but the value will differ. You will see that whenever you are talking about the value of Y, the value of Y will differ if you are having different cases, if you remember, for example, if we see the code, okay. so you can see here that the values, whenever you change the case, the values of Y will change. Now, the problem that we are solving in both scenarios this edge and this edge are discontinuous. The shape is the same, but the values are not the same. Okay, why the values are not the same? Because we have two different conditions. One condition was representing that it is fully discontinuous, four sides, which is scenario number one. Scenario number two are three discontinuous edges and one long edge, which is continuous. Okay, so now we can see when we have tried to solve, um, Support conditions is fine. It's not a big issue. Once again, if the problem has not specified for you the type of the type of connection, then the type of connection will go as default. The default connection or the regular connection that we are having is that the slabs and the beams are connected together. So you are going to deal with it as a restraint. Okay. If it's only mentioned for you that this is a precast element, or it's a slab sitting on a beam, a steel, uh, a concrete slab sitting on a steel beam without having any connection, at that time you will take it as simply supported only. Okay. So you can see for the support condition, it says for you that since the slab case is not specified, so it's assumed to be restrained. 
Okay. Once again, all the slabs that you are going to solve are restrained unless they have specified for you that this is a precast element or this is a concrete slab on a steel steel beam. Now the variance is going to start happening from here. Let's say from durability, this is not con conditions. Modify. So durability conditions. Now you'll see when it comes to durability conditions, it says for you mild and one hour of fire resistance. This is this is something similar to whatever we have done, so there is no issues about it. Now the problem occurs not in the not in the uh, exposure or water. Now you can see for the exposure it's mild, and then the grade of concrete has been already specified. So finding the cover will not be a big issue. Now you will see here. Now the problem when it comes to the floor, when it comes to the floor, we have two cases. We have one case which is simply supported, another case which is continuous. Now you can see in that particular slab, we have two scenarios. Scenario number one, where my short element or my short span, if we see here, the short span is discontinuous from both sides. So this is representing simply. Okay. And the other the other condition is where it's representing one simple and one continuous. <clears throat> so what to be taken? Okay. Now for this particular scenario, when you have multiple conditions, you are going to take the worst scenario. Now if we go and see and try to analyze which one is the worst scenario, if you remember I told you in the last class, if you remember the, uh, the explanation of deflection and 23, I told you if the case is not specified clearly, if one edge is, I mean, one edge is discontinuous, the other edge is continuous, you will see that if the condition has not specified, you will be taking it as 20, or you will be taking it as the case of simply supported, if you remember, because it's the worst scenario. It's the most critical scenario. Now, how to confirm, how to figure out that thing? Now, when you will go and see here, you will see that the value of cover for simply support, supported and continuous for half an hour is the same. For one hour is the same. For one and a half hours, you will see that the simply supported is more than the continuous. Means the simply support, supported requires bigger cover. It means it's a most critical situation. 35, 45, 55. You will see that simply supported is always more critical than the continuous. And this is what we have illustrated in the deflection in the last class. Okay, now once again, if your problem coming with two scenarios, then you will always, for the cover, you will always take the critical or dominant situation, which is simply supported. Now you can see that simply supported is taken and the cover is 20 now. The good thing about this problem, both of them, whether it's simply or continuous, both of them are 20 minutes, but you need to take care regarding the, regarding if it's more than one hour, okay? Now, let us see the other part. The other part is for bending. Now you see that we have slab one and slab two, as we said. Okay. This is case number one, where it's fully discontinuous. You can see the slab is not having any continuity. And then second case where the slab is discontinuous from three sides and then continuous from one side only. And then you will see that I started to draw the, the bending moment leave that this is because of the scaling. Okay, so we have two different bending moments here. It is uh, discontinuous from both sides. So it's going to be a parabolic. Here we have positive and negative due to one side is being discontinuous and the other side is being continuous. Same thing goes for the same thing goes for y. You can see in y both of the shapes are the same, and this is what we have saved. But the values are going to be changing. Okay. We have taken the first case. You can see first case is fully discontinuous, so we have only x positive and y positive. And in that we are going to take four edges discontinuous. Okay. And you can see that we have one value for x and one value for y.
and then this is going to be the drawing for the drawing for the case of the case of this continuous in one side and continuous on the other side so it starts from zero leave the scaling so it starts from zero it goes it's not uh, let me just Okay, so you can see that it starts from zero and then it goes to a negative. You will see that we have x positive and x negative. And in the previous problem, the previous problem or the previous scenario, we had x positive and y positive as well. So there is one x positive and there is y one y positive. Scenario number two, there is one x positive, one x negative, one y positive. So now we have two x positive. 2y positive. Which one to be taken? You will be taking the highest of the two. Okay. So now you can see we have 0.044 in this scenario, 0.069 in this scenario for x positive and y positive. If we go and see the other scenario, we can see that it's 0.103 and 0.056, where it's bigger in this scenario your beta y positive and your beta x positive are more or higher in this particular in this particular case so you are going to take these beta y and beta x so you can see that we have taken 0 0.103 and 0 0.056 as our betas now we don't have two x negative we have only one so we are going to use it and we are going to supply the reinforcement whatever whenever is required and then from here the same process will go you will be having exactly the same process that we have done finding k and then finding z and then finding your as checking for shear all the steps are going to be the same the only thing for you is how to analyze the slab and how to divide it into different uh, scenarios Okay. Is it clear the matter of the scenario? Okay. Is it clear the matter of the scenario? Uh, excuse me, Mister. Yes. Uh, can you please explain why we take the simple support and the durability? Yeah, because we said, if you remember in the last class, we said simply supported mm -hmm. is more severe than the continuous. Do you remember 26? Do you remember when I said 26, 23, and 20 related to deflection? Yes. Yeah, so that's one part. We said 23 is not available in the table. And we said you are going to use 23 if one side is discontinuous, one side is continuous. Okay. Now, if it's not there, if it's not there, then you need to take and you want to use the table literally, then you have two options, either to use 20 or 26. Which one is more severe? more severe is 20 because it gives you less span that's in case of deflection now in case of in case of durability here in case of durability here you can relate or give the reasoning for that thing based on the based on the values of cover now you can see here Compare between the values of simply supported and the values of continuous. Now, which one which one is uh, having higher value? In general, here, which one is having higher value? Is it the simply supported or is it the continuous? Simple support. So, which one is more severe? If it requires more more cover, if it requires more cover, then it's more severe, right? Yes. It's more critical. So will you de will will you design for less critical or more critical? For more. More critical. Because if I design for 20, for example, if I'm designing for two hours, and I took 25, 25 will be sufficient as a cover in case of the continuous part. For the discontinuous part, it's not going to be sufficient because I require 35. So to avoid 
that failure, we are going to take 35 because it's going to be safe in both continuous and discontinuous or continuous and simply supported scenario. Are we OK with that? Yes, Mr. Clear, thank you. Okay. Now the other thing is the detailing. Now, how you will see your detailing? So we are going to see the short span reinforcement as we said, and then we are going to have long span reinforcement. Both of them are both ends because we are referring to span. Now, what about what about the support? Okay, what about the support? Now we don't have in this area because it was discontinuous in this side. We have it in this area because it's continuous, but not the full thing. Okay, not the full thing. So if you see, only we have it for the part where it is continuous. For the part where it's continuous, we are going to supply top reinforcement. For the part where it's not continuous or it's discontinuous, I don't need to put top reinforcement. Are we clear? Are we Mr. fine? Uh, could you repeat which moment can we take uh, at the at the beginning, please? How many moments you have found? If you remember, we had this scenario of X, and we have this scenario of X. We had this scenario of Y. Let me just draw it in the other way. This scenario of Y and this scenario of Y. Now you have X positive, and you have X positive. You have here x negative. You have here y positive, and you have here y positive. How many x x positive you have? Two. Two. So you will take the highest of the two. Whatever whatever the condition, whatever is l y over l x, you will take the highest of the two because if you have if I have taken the highest coefficient, will give me the highest moment. The highest moment will give me the highest reinforcement. So if I put the highest reinforcement in both scenarios, this will be safe. OK, Mr. Thank you. Any other questions? Yes, Mr. No, yes, tell me. In, in bending, we yes. take in B, B plus uh, and uh, BX plus. Mm. We taken from the slab two, right? What, whatever is the highest. Okay, we take not, the highest. Not from no, not from case one, not from case two. Whatever is the highest. Once again, now we have two coefficients of x positive and two coefficient of x, two coefficient of y positive. Now, if yeah. I take the highest coefficient from the coefficients available, if there are two coefficients, and I took the highest coefficient. The highest coefficient will give me the highest moment. The highest moment will give me the highest reinforcement. So if I supply the highest reinforcement, it will be safe in the lower reinforcement area. Yes. OK. OK. Thanks. Now, you should be expecting something similar in your midterm, not your quiz, because in your quiz, it's going to be most probably either uh, multiple choice or short answer question. You will not have uh, uploading and whatever question you are going to have these type of questions are you? Okay. now this is this is related to this is related to uh, this is related to the extra problem you can refer to it and try to solve it from the beginning and end to the end and you can compare now first what I would recommend you recommend I read I would recommend you to go and solve it yourself first and compare it with the answers of the presentation now you can see here clearly that we have x positive, we have y positive reinforcement, we have x negative, but now we supplied y positive. Okay. Now you can see we had x positive and x negative in the drawing, and we have y positive in the drawing, but we don't have y negative. The question says why do we supply y negative? The answer is that slab is a two-way reinforcement. Even if you don't have a reinforcement on the other side, you need to supply it in order for you to stop hacking from happening. So in this y negative, how much 
is to be supplied, you will be supplying the minimum reinforcement. So now if I go to the bending and I check the values of AS, you will see that we have MY negative equal to zero. And then when I'll go and calculate, your M MY negative will give you a K negative and whatever, everything is equal to zero only. But when we are going to calculate the area of reinforcement, we used to cal we used to compare between the required and the minimum, if you remember. So in this scenario, your ASY negative is zero, but the minimum to be provided, the minimum is to be provided is 227. So in that scenario, we'll be providing 227 as a minimum reinforcement. You, I cannot put only one side reinforcement in a slab. It bends in two ways. I mean, it bends in two directions. So even if you have only one moment, you need to supply the other moment, the same that you have done in your design of one-way slab. Any question? Again, regarding with the show. What is the part which is not clear? Why no Y negative? Because in the drawing, there was no Y negative. In your drawings, if you remember, we had two cases. One is X positive, one is Y positive. We have X negative. And on the other side, we have X positive and Y positive. There is no Y negative. Any other questions that you are having? Okay. So once again, what I would recommend you, rather than having a lot of questions now, I would recommend you to go and try to solve the problem. Whenever you are solving the problem, you will figure out what are the issues inside. Okay. After that, you can ask me in the post that I'm going to post for you, where you can ask any question related to whatever we have finished. Which graph, Matosan? Which graph? Bending moment, enforcement, which one? The reinforcement. Which part of the reinforcement is not clear? Which part is not clear? What is the part which is not clear in the detail? Why to take half? Now, the detailing represents what exactly? Okay, detailing represents what exactly? Detailing represents the shape of the the shape of the slab, right? The detailing represents the shape of the slab, and it represents the moment as well, right? Okay. So if I have if I have my slab in this way, now can you tell me the bending moment diagram? The bending moment diagram. Is going to be in this way. Do you agree? Do you agree that this is the correct bending moment? Okay. So if I go and supply negative or top reinforcement, 
Will I go and supply it in zone one or zone two? Zone two. Is it full or is it certain part? Okay. Once again, you can see in zone number two, there is no negative sending moment. So why would you put the reinforcement in zone number two? Yes, Matosan. Shadai was asking Matosan. I didn't say that it's case number two. Yes, Matosan. Where is where is the negative bending moment in zone number one or zone number two? Once again, if you see. If you zoom in, you will see that this is x positive, this is x positive, and here we have x negative. So the negative is available in zone number one. Now in zone number one, there is a negative bending moment which will give you a negative reinforcement or a top reinforcement. Now in zone number two, we don't have we don't have a negative bending moment. Why would I put a top reinforcement? There is no slab here. Why would I supply extra reinforcement? Your extra top reinforcement will be acting like this. Now there is no slab. Why would you put extra reinforcement in this region? So once again, if I go and see my slab, that this is my slab, what I can see now, if we talk that this is my bottom reinforcement, you will see that we have X positive, and on the other side, we have Y positive. Whether we are talking about case number one or case number two, there will be Y positive. Now, since there is X positive and Y positive, there will be a reinforcement of X. So this is ASX, and there will be a reinforcement of Y, which is ASY. Let's say positive and positive. Do you agree for the bottom, since we have X positive and X negative? Do you agree with me that this is the drawing for the bottom reinforcement? Okay, for the top reinforcement. Top plan reinforcement. Where will be your where will be your um, reinforcement? Your reinforcement will be only wherever there is a continuity. So this is representing your this is representing your AS Y positive oh as sorry asx negative since it's top now since it's a slab there will be two reinforcements there will be another reinforcement on the other side there will be another reinforcement on the other side which is representing the minimum reinforcement supplied for asy negative now to combine these, to combine them in a cross section, we can see we have our ASX positive, which is at the bottom. We have our reinforcement in the other direction. Okay, which is representing what exactly? which is representing ASY positive. And then what do we have? 
What do we have? We have our reinforcement here. Okay, which is representing which is representing ASX negative. Okay. If I'm taking this particular section. I take this particular section okay. and a combination of this section and this is going to be your your ASO okay. now if you are taking a section here okay. if you are taking a section here for example then your drawing is going to be only only bottom reinforcement so if I take this one as PD and this is AA. You can see that we don't have any top reinforcement here. In BB, we have. Is it clear? Are we fine now? Any other question? Most welcome, Marcus. Any other question? If you have any question, it's better to ask now because I'm going to flip this part of slabs and we are going to go for the load transfer. So once again, as I said, it's it for you. Go and solve it fully, and then compare your values. Compare your values with with a PowerPoint presentation. Today's session is going to be about load transfer to beams. We have done some basic loading. I mean, load transfer of beams in your design of structures one. Today we are going to have a more elaborated um, discussion about the load transfer. Now before we need to understand how the transfer of loading is happening to be. Okay. Now different different arrangement of uh, different arrangement of slabs are there. We have one way, we have two way one way can be supported by two slab by two beams and then we have two way supported by four three beams two beams different arrangements are there okay now normally one way slab will be supported by either two or four beams they can be three as well in uh, i mean rare cases but normally either two or four okay can you tell me where we can see two Can you tell me where normally we see a slab is supported by two beams only? In one-way slab? Can you give me an example of a one-way slab? In reality, can you give me an example of a one-way slab? Uh, so it's likely one. What? Can you give me a slab which is normally having short uh, span in the width and then long span in the length? So it's slab for which parking. One? Why would you have in a parking uh, one-way slab? In the parking, you will not be putting the beams only for one one parking. 
for a car shed, are you going to put the beams only surrounding the car? Surrounding the car parking, I mean. Okay, a good example, a good example of a one-way slab is the corridor. Can you see your corridors? Mamara, your corridor. Your corridor is normally having a smaller width and a longer, longer length, right? I, I said Leon. <laughs> what you say? Leon, Leon. Leon, okay. Okay, so the corridor, do you agree with me that the corridor is a one-way slab? Okay, what about staircase? Do you agree that staircase is a one-way slab? So we have two good examples of two good examples of one-way solid slabs or one-way slabs. One is a corridor, another one is a, a corridor, and then we have a staircase. Now corridor will will normally be having four beams. It will not have two beams. It will be having beams from all the sides. You will not be having two beams only on two sides and then leave the other two sides. Okay. So when I say when I say one way slab, it's wrong to say that we have only two beams. There are scenarios where there are two beams, and the only scenario where normally we have two beams is either whenever we talk about staircase. Now, if you see your staircase, staircase will be supported by two sides only. It will not be supported by four sides. Okay. So staircase is a good example of a one-way slab supported by two beams. The majority of other two-way, I mean, the other one-way slab is, is going to be, or the majority are going to be supported by four beams only, not by two beams. Okay. Now, if you see, this is an example of a one-way slab, which is supported by two beams as an example of a staircase. Okay. Now, if you see here, we want to calculate the value of loading or the value of intensity coming on the coming on the beam. Okay. Now, if I have if I have an example, if I have an example of a paper, okay, or an element which is pulled by both sides. Once again, what I'm trying to illustrate for you here that we are having, for example, a staircase. So I'm having a staircase. The staircase is going to be supported by by a beam here and another beam here. Okay. So we have a staircase supported by two beams only, as an example here, or a regular slab supported by two beams just for illustration. So we have one support here, another support here. And you will see if there is any loading, if there is any loading, and these supports are acting exactly the same, you will see that half of half of the loading will be stuck to the first support and then half of the other loading will be stuck to the other support okay, as it is shown in this particular figure. Now to make it a bit simpler, you just try to uh, understand it in a way that it's a paper and try to be pulled by two particular persons since we are having two beams only. So since there are two beams, we have two people trying to pull our paper. They are trying to pull it with the same intensity. What will you be having? You will be having exactly two pieces coming for each and every uh, person. For each and I mean, uh, or half of the slab will go for the first beam, and half of it will go to the to the other beam. Okay. So now, if we go and see, go and see here in this particular in this particular problem. Now you can see we have. Alex, and we have LY. 
now you will see that your beams are available in the longer direction okay your beams are available in this scenario in the longer direction now if it's in the longer direction you will see that half of this slab is going to go to beam number 1 for example and then we have the other half is going to go for beam number 2 now how to represent that how to represent that so if we took if we took this particular beam you will see that this is my beam number 2 now beam number 2 is having a column as a support from here so this is the column and then we have another column from here so there is another column and then we are having a udl we are having a udl now what is the intensity of the udl what is the height of udl here the height of the UDL is going to be your what is this length? How much is this length? This length is going to be your LX over T. Whatever is here mentioned as S. S is representing short, or you can say LX. So this is going to be representing the height is going to be the height of the intensity is going to be representing your LX over LX over T. Now, what about a one-way slab or a two-way slab? One-way or a two-way slab supported by four beams. Okay. Now, you can see, if I try to imagine it in this way, if I try to imagine it in this way, I have a two-way slab, which is, for example, six into four. And then I have another slab, which is four into four. Okay, we have 6 into 4, and then we have 4 into 4. 6 into 4 is representing this one, and then 4 into 4 is representing the other side. Now you can see what will happen here. Since we are having 4, since we are having 4 beams, it is like 4 people trying to pull my paper. Each one is trying to pull it from a side. Now, since we have one longer side and one shorter side, the person, by default, the person is who is holding from the longer dimension is going to have uh, a better grip. He is going to pull stronger. Okay. Eventually, the amount of loading which he will take is going to be higher than the one who is having a shorter direction. So once again, if I'm having a paper, an A4 paper, one is trying to pull from the longer direction, one is trying to pull from the shorter direction, we are pulling with the same intensity, you will see the person who is pulling from the longer side will have a bigger a bigger part of the paper okay. so what will happen here you will be saying that we are having b1 b2 b3 and then b4 now whenever we pull whenever you start pulling you will see that your element is going to start the tearing from here and then this tearing is going to go to the side of your support so they will be continuing to the side, giving you two trapezoidals and two triangles. Why two trapezoidals and two triangles? Because we have longer spans and shorter spans. We have uh, we have longer beams and we have shorter beams. The longer beams we are going to have trapezoidal, shorter beams is going to have uh, triangle. It's like we are having four once again, four different people. Two are strong and two are uh, weak. The person who are strong will have bigger part of the part of the element or bigger part of the paper. The other scenario, which is four into four, once again, four people are trying to pull or tear the paper. They are having exactly the same intensity, I mean, the same uh, let's say the same strength. Everyone is trying to pull with the same magnitude. You will see at the end, each person is going to have one part. And these parts are going to be exactly the same because everyone is having an equal shear, an equal span. So in this scenario, what will happen? You are not going to have trapezoidal and triangle like case number one. For case number one, you are going to have a tear from here. And then every person is going to have his shear. The one in the longer direction will take a trapezoidal. The one in the shorter direction will take a triangle. Now, if it's equal, if it's equal, the failing point is going to be here. And then it goes to the side. 
So in this scenario, you're going to have a you're going to have a triangle, and these triangles are equal triangles. Okay. Now our next step is to verify is to verify these particular loadings. How much is the intensity here in case of a triangle, and how much is the intensity in case of a trapezoidal? Okay. And then open. So now, if we see that we are talking about a two-way slab, my two-way slab is having a dimension of LX, and it's having a dimension of L1. And we said when it fails, this is going to fail in this particular manner, if it's rectangle giving you two trapezoidal and two triangles. Now you can see if we call this particular beam as beam number one as a sample and then we'll take this one as beam number two you will see that your beam number one is having this length there is a support here there is a support here so we just place a support and then we have a trapezoidal shape Now we know that your B1 length is going to be the same length as your L1. This is not a big issue. But the problem that I need to know the intensity or the value of this particular load in order for me to get the bending moment, because without the bending moment, they cannot design for it. Okay. The same thing goes for your LX. You will see that this is your LX. There is a support here. There is another support here. So let's say that this is, for example, C1, and this is C2, this is C3. So you will see it's supported by C1 and C3. Here it is supported by C1 and then C2. Okay. So now if I see C1, for example, if this is my column, which is C1, then you will see that C1 is going to take certain parts of the loading from B2 and certain part of the loading will be taken from B1. Okay. So this is B2 and this is B1. So now if I want the load coming on C1, it will be the reaction of beam number 2 plus the reaction of beam number 1. That's if I want to calculate my loading in column number one. But now, before doing the cancellation of reaction and the, and the bending moment and the other thing, we need to get the intensity. So we say now it's going to be a triangle in this scenario. Now the span for B2 is going to be your LX. So we know the span for B1 and B2. Remaining is to find how much is this. These things. Okay. Now, let us start by the easier part, which is B1. Now, how much is this? If we are referring, for example, that this is your S. How much is the length of S? Can you help me here? LX by 2. Okay, so you can see that your S is half of LX. So this is another S. So I can say here that the intensity is going to be your LX. This is going to be LX over 2. Do you agree that this is your LX over 2? Okay, now if this is your LX over 2, if this is your LX over 2, then how much is this one? How much is the height of triangle? Knowing that the angle is 45 here. Yes. No, it cannot be Martha. 
it cannot be ly over 2 ly over 2 over 2 you know how come how did you know that it's still quarter of ly once again see this is half of ly and this is my triangle only it cannot be ly over 2 and I cannot make sure that it's ly over 2 over 2 can you can you tell me how much is your 10 10 45 do you have a calculator can you check 10 45 is how much okay so 10 45 one. will give you will give you one so now if you say we have this particular element as your s okay and let us call this one to be my z okay. and then the angle is the angle is 45 so now by using the 10 function that it's equal to, to 1 it means that my s is equal to my z do you agree okay so if my s is if my s is lx over 2 then how much is my z my z is going to be lx over 2 do you agree so this is lx over 2 now what do we have you can see that this this part this part represents your triangle from here to here so i can say that this part is my lx over 2 the same thing goes here this is lx over 2 can you tell me how much is this part Once again, if you see this part from here to here, which is this one, it is LX over 2. This part, which is from here to here, it's LX over 2. How much is the middle portion? Okay. Now, this is my LY. This is my LY. We said it's the trapezoid. We said this is Okay, we said that this is LX over 2 and we said as well this one is LX over 2. Now remaining is how much? Remaining is LY minus LX. This is my full LY. I'm removing from it LX over 2. I'm removing another LX over 2. So this is going to be LX, LY minus LX. Is it clear? Are we clear? Okay. So whenever, whatever is the case, whether we are talking about a one-way slab or a two-way slab, the height of the triangle, all the trapezoidal, all the rectangle is going to be LX over 2. Okay. So turning back to our PowerPoint, you can see now, here it says for you LX over 2, and here it says for you LX over 2. And I have explained why did we come and have it LX over 2. Okay. What about what about the case of the cantilever? What about the case of the cantilever? We have taken one one simply supported. I mean, we have taken one one way and we have taken one two way, and we said one way can be either supported by two beams or four beams. If it's supported by four beams, it is going to be the same case of two way distribution. Now, what about what about the cantilever? Now, can you see that this slab now is supported? This slab is supported, or this slab, let's say this slab. This slab is supported by how many beams? How many beams are they? One. one. Only one. So, how many how many areas you will be expecting will you be expecting two areas if you remember 
when it says two beams, there were two areas. Four beams means four areas. Five beams means five areas, and it goes on. Now there is only one, one beam. It means there will be one area. It means that the whole loading of the slab will be transferred only to this beam, because we don't have any other beam. Are we clear about this? So you can see now that this is my beam. It is supported by a column from here. It is supported by a column from here. So this is my beam. It is supported by a column. It is supported by a column from this side or another beam, for example. Okay. And then now we know the intensity of the loading. Uh, we know that it's a UDL. How much is the length? You can see that the length is your L effective or in this scenario it is going to be your LX, which is your shorter span. This is my L1, and this is my LX. So you will see that the intensity now is going to be LX. Are we clear? Like now, one person is trying to pull my slab or my paper, you will see that the full load of the paper will be taken only once by one person. Any question till now? Any questions till now? No, Mr. No. Okay. Now, this is a representation on showing you how the negative the enforcement will be laying above the beam and how it is looking like in reality. You can see that your top negative bar of the slab is laying or sitting on the reinforcement of the beam. Okay. This is only for illustration purposes. Now, before we go to the problem, before we go to the problem, now, if you remember, we said there are three cases, right? There are three cases. We said if it's two beams, we have illustrated. If it, there are four beams, if it's only one, one beam. In all scenarios, you can see that we have the intensity or the height here is representing in terms of a length. Lx over 2, Lx over 2, Lx. All of them are represented in terms of height. Right. Now, the loading should be having which unit? The loading should be a, having a unit of length or a unit of force. The loading on the beam should be having which unit? Unit of length, because LX over two, LX is only in meters. So LX in meters divided by two will give you only meters. So Lx over 2 is the height of the intensity. It's not the intensity. It's not the force. It is the height of the force. Okay, and we are going to learn how to find the force after uh, after a few moments. Let us try to solve one problem. Now it says for you a composite floor, a composite floor consisting of 150 mm thick reinforced concrete slab supported on steel beams spanning seven meters and spaced at three meter centers is to be designed to carry an imposed load of 3.5 kilonewton per meter square if the unit mass of the steel beams is 50 kg per meter run calculate the design load on typical internal beam okay so they asked us they asked us to draw or to find the design loads on this particular beam, which is beam number one. Okay. Now, what I need to do, I need first to start understanding the question. Now, they are saying for me that the beam, the steel beam, is spanning seven meters. What is what is the meaning of steel beam spanning seven meters? Okay. 
steel beam spanning 7 meter what does it mean long of uh -huh. the beam okay. so the length of the beam is going to be 7 meter when i say spanning or the span it's not ly but when we say span means the span of the beam is 7 okay so we are talking about that this length is 7 meter And we are saying that the steel beams are spaced at three meter center. Means the spacing between one steel beam to another steel beam from center to center is three meter. Now, if you see now these particular data given to you, you will know that you are going to be having slabs of three into seven. So now we are having three spans or three slabs. Okay, three slabs which are three into seven. We don't have beams on the red color, on the red red line that I have drawn. Only on the black solid line. So we have only four beams. Okay, but the slabs are three into seven. Now three into seven are going to be one way or two way slabs. If we divide seven by three. It is going to give you something more than two, so this is going to go as one way. Slab. One way. Now, finding one way slab or two way slab is very important when you design. When you, if you want to design the slab, it is very important. Now, for load transfer, one way slab or two way slab is not a big issue for me. The big issue is how many beams are there supporting the slab itself. Now, if I talk about S1, which is slab number one. How many how many beams supporting S1 now? Once again, remember, two. if there is only one beam, means there will be one area only. Two beams, two areas. Three beams, three areas. Four beams, four areas, and it goes on. Now, how many beams are there? Two beams. Two beams. You will see that half of the slab will be taken to the left side beam. And the other half of the slab will go to the other half of the beam or the other side beam. Do you agree? Yes. What about S2 now? Let us call this one to be B1. Let us call this one B1. Let us call this one to be B2. And this is B3. And then B4. Now we are supposed to be finding for B3, but anyhow, for slab number two, how many beams are there for slab number two? Once again, you will see that slab number two is having two beams. So half will go here. The other half will go to the other side. Because only there are two beams, means there will be two areas only. What about slab number three? Once again, there are two beams. So half will go here and the other half will go there. Are we clear? Once again, one way and two way slab here. When we do the load distribution, it does not matter. It matters how many beams are there, how many things will carry your element. If I'm carrying a block and there is only one person carrying the block, then the load will be transferred to one person. If there are four persons carrying your block, then the load will be transferred to four. If three, then three. If two, then two. Okay. Now you can see that B1 will carry how many loads or how many areas? B1. B1. You will see that B1 will carry half of S1, one area. What about beam two? Beam two will carry two areas. One is from slab one, one is from slab two. What about B3? Once again, you will see that it will carry two areas. One is from slab two, another one is from slab three. What about the last beam? The last beam will only take one area, which is from slab number, slab number three. So now we have learned, we have learned that this slab or this particular beam is having a length of seven meters. This particular slab is having, or this particular 
beam is having seven meters. Now, here it's not clear. Maybe it's going to be extended, but there will be a support, of course. Okay. So seven meters. Now, how many areas are there, or how many loadings are coming on this particular on this particular uh, beam? There will be the loading which is coming from slab number two. And we said this height is going to be your LX over 2. So first one is from S2. And then the second one, once again, we are going to have 7 meters. The intensity is LX over 2. This is 7 meters. And now it's going to be for some slab. Some slab 3. So once again, the beam will be carrying one load from slab number two, one load from slab number three, and then the last thing, it will carry itself. So the self weight of the beam. So we need to get these three things. Okay, we need to get these three things. Now. So we said seven meter beam, and then we have a UDL because it's a, it's a rectangle. The height is LX over two. Now, what is the unit of loading in slab? What is the unit of loading of the slab, and what is the unit of loading in beam? Do you remember the unit of loading? Unit of loading in a slab and unit of loading in beam. Do you remember that? Slab it is force per area. It's an area load. And when it comes to beam, it is going to be linear load, so per meter. Okay. Now you can see here, the slab is having a unit load. Oh, uh, the unit loading is kilonewton per meter square, while for the beam, it is going to be per meter length. Okay. Now how to convert from kilonewton per meter square, because now we want to convert from a slab to a beam level, from kilonewton to kilonewton per meter square to kilonewton per meter. How to convert from the first one to another one, to the second one? We need to multiply by what? Length. We need to multiply by some length. And this length is represented by LX over 2. Okay, this length is represented by LX over 2. It is like you are saying for me, my loading for 1 meter height into 1 meter width is going to equal, for example, 2.5. Now, if I told you my height of intensity is 2 meters, then I'll just multiply this 2.5 into 2 meters, okay. where I'm going to convert it as, as a, a linear load, okay. where I'm going to convert it as a linear load. So once again, what we need to do, we need to get the loading in terms of slabs, multiply it by the length, in order for us to get the linear loading on a beam. Now, how to find how to find your loading on a slab? If you remember, the loading on a slab is represented as dead load and life load. Now, the life load has been given, which is 3.5 kN per meter square. No, nobody should be asking me why or how did I know that this loading is on a slab or on a beam. You can refer to the unit of loading and you will know directly. Since it's per unit area, then you should know that this is the slab load. So the life loading is 3.5. Remaining is a dead load. Now finishes are not mentioned here, but the only thing mentioned is is the thickness of the slab. So we already know how to calculate the self weight, which is representing a dead load. So now you can see that load is represented by self weight. Imposed load is given. So we can calculate the total loading on a slab. 
So loading on the beam, this is what we said. It is self weight of the beam plus loads from the slabs. So we have slab one or slab two and then slab three, and then we have self weight. We said three loadings are there. Okay. So one load is from this slab and one load from the other slab. And then we have self weight. Now how to calculate how to calculate the self weight? How to calculate the self weight? The self weight is calculated as 24 into 0.15. Okay, 24 into 0.15. This is representing your your life load. Okay, 24. Um, I mean, this is representing your self weight. 24 multiplied by the thickness. The thickness has been given as 150 mm. So once again, this 1.4 into self weight plus 1.6 into 3.5. This is representing your W. Okay, so this is representing your your W. So my W, I have got it to be how much? Can you can you help me here? How much is your W? Which is 1.4. The total, the total cannot be 5.6. The total thing. How much is your W? So your W is 10.64. So we have the, we have found the W of slab. So 10.64 kilonewton per meter square. That's the unit of loading in a slab. We say to convert it to a linear load, we need to multiply by by a height or by a length. What is the height or of our intensity? The height is Lx over 2. So my Lx over 2 is how much? My Lx over 2 is 3 over 2, which is represented by 1.5 1 here. Can you give me this one? Can you give me this value? Fifteen point ninety six. What's the unit now? The unit is now linear. The load is linear on a beam. So kilonewton per meter. Now this is from one slab. How many slabs are there? How many slabs are there? How many slabs are affecting your beam? We said S1 and S2 or whatever S2 or S3, S3 previously. So now this is from the first one. Now the first one is it, if we are calling this one S1 and we are calling this one S2, are they the same? Slab number one and slab number two, are they the same? Slab one and slab two, are they the same? If they are the same, can I multiply by two only? Can I multiply by two? Now let us say I have two hands. Yes. I have two hands. One is my right hand, one is my left hand. Now in my right hand, I'm taking 25 kg. My right, my left hand, I'm taking 15 kg, for example. The total that I'm taking is going to be the right plus the left. Now in this scenario, there are two slabs. I should add the slab, I mean, I should add the load which is coming from slab number two plus the load which is coming from slab number one. Now in this scenario, slab number two and slab number one are exactly the same. So it means that rather than calculating it once again, I'll just multiply by two. Now how much is this? 31.92 kilonewton per meter. Now we have calculated this one, which is now clear for you why we have multiplied by 1.5 and why we have multiplied by two. Now, we have taken the slab load from the first slab, from the second slab. Remaining is the self-weight. Now, the self-weight, now the beam, is it a concrete beam or is it a steel beam? In the problem, is it a concrete beam or is it a steel beam? Steel beam. Steel beam. In concrete beam, we learn to calculate the self-weight using 24 into width into depth. 
okay into depth into width i'll come to some i repeat it 3 over 2 is lx over 2 what is the what is the height of your loading we said in order for us to convert from kilonewton per meter square to kilonewton per meter we need to multiply by height now i'm saying for you i'm saying for you my loading is 10.64 for one meter height and one meter width now my height or intensity is not one meter my intensity is 1.5 meter so there is an, ex an extra 0.5 now, if it's one meter giving you 10.64, how much 1.5 will give you? 1.5 will give you 10.64 multiplied by 1.5. So it will give you 15.96. Once again, you are telling me for each one meter, my loading is 10.64. Now I'm saying for you, the height of the loading is not one meter, it is 1.5 meter, which is LX over two, three divided by two. So now, your loading for 1.5 is going to be 15.96. Is it clear? Okay. Once again, we have finished from the slabs. Remaining is the beam. The beam is the beam is a steel beam, and they have given us the loading. They say the unit mass of steel beam is 50 kilogram per meter. Now we said. To convert from kilogram to kilonewton, we need to divide by we need to divide by hundred. So fifty divided by hundred will give you 0.5. Right? From kilogram to kilonewton, we said we are going to divide by hundred. If you remember, I already explained that thing for you. So fifty divided by hundred is going to be 0.5. Now you can see already the dead load in the slab and the life load in the slabs are multiplied by the corresponding factor of safety that load was multiplied by 1.4 life load is multiplied by 1.6 now the steel beam is it a the steel beam self weight sorry is it is it is it a dead load or is it a life load dead load dead load that's why we have multiplied it by 1.4 Mister, it is minus or plus. Which one is minus? What's the minus? Wait, then. Now see. Okay. See. Okay. So is it clear now? Yeah, yes, yes. It cannot be a negative. Yeah. I thought there is a negative self weight. You cannot have a negative self weight. My weight is fifty. I'm carrying from my left hand. 15 kilogram. I'm carrying from my right side 15 kilogram. The total, my total load is going to be my self weight plus my left hand plus my right hand. Slab one, slab two plus my self weight. Are we clear? So now you can see that the final loading on the beam is going to be 32.62, which is going to be 31.92 plus. 1.4 multiplied by the 0.5, which is self weight of the beam. So 32.62 is now going to be my total loading on the beam. So now if I want to go and find the bending moment, my element is going to be 7 meter length. And then I'm having a total loading of, I'm having a total loading of 32.62 kilonewton per meter. Are we clear? Any question? Sir, can you repeat the last point, please? Which last point? How did we get 32.62? How much is... You agree that this, this value, do you agree that this value is whatever we have calculated as... Uh, as 31.92 do you agree yes. okay. now yeah. the remaining is, is it, the remaining thing is the self weight can you multiply 1.4 plus 0.5 into 0 0.5 0 0.5 is the weight of them of the steel per meter or mass of steel being per meter 
Yeah, it's 0 0.7. So add 31.92 to 0.7. Yes, OK. We got 32.62. Uh, oh. So now we have we have got we have got uh, the loading on the beam, and once again, this will help us. Okay. This will help us in finding the bending moment phase. Now there is another problem for you. There is another problem for you which you can try yourself. Now this is going to be a two-way slide. So think of it. It is almost the same scenario. The only thing now we are having uh, multi things. Like for example here, it says for us we need to check for B1, C1. Okay, so this is my B. This is my B and this is my B1, and this is my C1. So now you can see that this B1, C1, if we try to see, first let us draw. The distribution. So we have triangle and trapezoidal. Once again, here we have triangle and trapezoidal. So if if this one is, for example, S1 and this is S2, and then once again here we have triangle and trapezoidal. Now, when we talk about B1, C1, so this is my B1 and this is my C1. You can see that B1, C1 is taking only one beam. I mean, when taking one area, which is a trapezoidal area, from slab number two. Okay. Now, what about B2, C2? Now, B2, C2 is this one and this one. Now, you can see B2, C2 is going to take one trapezoidal from S1 and is going to take one trapezoidal from S2. Now, what about B1, B3? So this is my B1, and this is my B3. Now, B1, B3 is a bit of a problem. B1, B3, you will see, if we try to draw, you will see B1, B3 is going to carry a triangle from here. So this is going to be a triangle. And there is another triangle from here. We have another triangle. Okay. And we have a trapezoidal from this side. So we're having a trapezoidal. Once again, these are loads. You cannot have them negative and positive. Your loading is always positive. So you add them. Okay. And then do not forget that we have a beam here. So we're having a point load. So you have a combination of two triangles, one point load and one trapezoidal. So that's something which is good for you to try. Okay. And then you have column B1, C1. So this is going to be uh, homework for you. You try it. If you have any doubt, then we will be discussing it in the in the upcoming class. Okay. And then we'll add one thing for you. Those who are having class, they can leave. Those who are not, just stay for a certain moment. Okay. I want you to assume a suitable load, a suitable, let's say, wall load. Let's say three meters on beams. So I want you to try to think if we are having a wall, a wall load of blocks, 200 mm blocks of three meter on the beam, how to calculate its load as well. Okay. And we are going to discuss that next class, inshallah. Do you have any question for now? Anything for now? No, sir, thank you. Okay. Once again, rega regarding your quiz, regarding your quiz, whatever we finish before your quiz will be included. So full slabs, transfer loading to the beam, um, 
some basics of foundations as well, most probably. Okay, and it's going to be either multiple choice or short answer. But of course, you need to calculate for certain questions in order to get the final answer. There will be a lot of drawings as well. Finished? Thank you very much. And see you in the upcoming classes.